si most of you have heard me in Spanish last Tuesday. <laughs> But uh, I will s <laughs> I'll say this in English. First of all, thank you for the organizing committee for allowing me to speak uh, about, my, about this uh, work. <clears throat> I will make a little introduction <clears throat> about uh, sup supramolecular chemistry. Uh, we see the one, three, five tries in ring uh, can experiment <clears throat> uh, most supramolecular interaction uh, known. <clears throat> And so uh, our objective, uh, this work, is um, <clears throat> a couple uh, amino, uh, amino acid group to our O135 triacin ring. <clears throat> so uh, as we've said, triacin presents supramolecular interactions, and we will study them like metal coordination. <clears throat> We'll introduce uh, the important ions in this work. Uh, first ion is thing two. And the most frequent use uh, actually are galvanization and brush manufacture. <coughs> zinc is the second trace element in abundance in the body. <coughs> A deficit in the zinc <coughs> can cause growing delay and a high excess. Zinc is not very toxic can cause a higher risk of prostate cancer. <clears throat> the other important ion in this work is mercury. <clears throat> uh, mercury has been used from ancient age in countries like China or Egypt. Uh, its use was extended to civilizations like India, Greece, Rome, or Incans, but the main production <coughs> main producer is the near city of, near town of Almaden. <coughs> we locate Almaden in the map in the southwestern corner of the Ciudad Real province. <coughs> And this mine has been producing until uh, two, 2002, <coughs> when European Union forbid the destruction of this metal. Mercury has been used since ancient times as vermilion paint. <clears throat> And Middle Age uh, was a golden age for mercury in alchemy. <clears throat> And Modern Age uh, saw new applications for this metal. But since ancient times, uh, Hippocrates and Pliny the Elder described toxic effects for mercury. And the literature have, has illustrated this toxicity in characters uh, like the Hatter. <clears throat> But in the middle 20th century, in uh, Japan, Minamata Bay, <clears throat> there occurred a disaster re related to mercury. <clears throat> a factory uh, dumped to the ocean uh, large quantities of mercury. This mercury uh, was uh, <laughs> walked through the food chain to arrive to humans, people. And uh, each step this mercury advance in that change, um, <clears throat> it um, <clears throat> bioconcentrates. This bioconcentration is known like Mita Minamata effect by this tragedy. <clears throat> And so uh, we need a fluorescent probes to detect these metal ions due to the facts commented <clears throat> the previous uh, images. And we can classify these probes in chemosensors. If the analyte bends to the floor of, to the reactive site <coughs> in a reversible way, or chemosimeters, if the analyte bends to the reactive sites in an irreversible way. <coughs> One arrow. We also can classify uh, the fluorescent probes by the performance mechanism. If we have a probe that has no fluorescent properties, and when it interacts with the with the analyte, uh, shows fluorescent properties, <coughs> we have a of own probe. 
And if our pro has previous fluorescent properties, and these properties as are modified by interacting with the analyte, we have a radiometric probe. <coughs> also, <coughs> there are many works about probes, about chemosensors. There are not many works about triacin-based chemosensors. In this case, we have, uh, we have reduced uh, the deformation with two triacin chemosensors that detects uh, mercury and zinc that are the ions, the important ions in this world. <coughs> and in this case, uh, uh, triacin doesn't interact with mercury, but <coughs> is the timine <coughs> which induces aggregation, and this aggregation induces strong fluorescence. Here we have another example where um, <coughs> the melamine interacts with uh, gold nanoparticles and the authors propose that melamine interacts with mercury stronger than with gold nanoparticles. This modifies the fluorescence, the optical properties of the system and they have a chemosensor. Here we present two more chemosensors based on the triacin ring. In this case, uh, they detect uh, thing two. <coughs> As we said in our additives, <coughs> we have synthesized these triacinyl glycine derivatives in very short times, three minutes, <coughs> in mic using microwaves, and the purification step is very simple. So, this work fits well on green chemistry on the principles one, five, and six. We have extended this method to other triacinyl glycines, having in, any in every case very short times and good yields. <coughs> we performed a nuclear magnetic resonance to characterize <coughs> these compounds. We highlight the signals of for NH and CH2 group, methylene group. When we perform the nuclear magnetic resonance experience at different temperatures, we see that the signal corresponding to amino group uh, moves, uh, says chemical shifts when we change temperature. We have calculated the coalescence temperature for the NH bond it's result 71 degrees, and we have a free energy of rotation of 71.66 kilojoules <coughs> mol. So yeah. <coughs> when we perform <coughs> NMR experiments at different pH values, <coughs> and we have to note first of all that amino acid uh, presents in normally in a switcherion uh, form. <coughs> and we don't know uh, where is the proton. In acid pH, we see the signal corresponding to carboxyl proton, <coughs> but um, we don't know if this proton is on the carboxyl group or it is on any other nitrogens of the structure. We propose this proton is located on the nitrogens corresponding to the N triacin, uh, to the 1, 3, 5 triacin ring. Hmm. We also see that uh, the, and the amino from the glycine <coughs> uh, signal uh, changes um, having acid pH or having or we, or when we have a basic pH. <coughs> like this signal, the methylene <coughs> corresponding signal also moves uh, its chemical shift when we have acid pH or when we have basic pH. Mm. When we perform the <coughs> carbon and 13 carbon mm, nuclear magnetic resonance spectra in acid pH, <coughs> we see that triacin signals uh, mm, we don't see a very clear triacin signals, 
and in basic pH, this signal is much stronger than in the acid media. It's probably <coughs> due to protonation of the triacin ring. <coughs> we have obtained crystals <coughs> and, and we have been able to perform X-ray diffraction. And we see <coughs> the, trias, the proton on the tri over the triacin rings and <coughs> numerous interactions like an intramolecular hydrogen bond between, uh, between this group and the pyrosol uh, nitrogen. We, we see more supramolecular interactions from this, for this structure, like hydrogen bonds and pi pi staking. Here we have another example, another crystal from the piperidine derivative, <coughs> where we see the triacin ring protonated uh, once more. <coughs> And uh, once more, we have hydrogen bonds. And in this case, uh, we see pi pi staking even between the triacin rings. We have studied the optical properties for these derivatives. <coughs> and we, uh, we see that the absorption maxima are located on the ultraviolet region. And <coughs> the emission maxima also located near ultraviolet region, but I will highlight the poor intensity of the emission spectra. When we <coughs> summary these optical properties, uh, we see the very low quantum yield that indicates us that these compounds are no useful to OLEDs, for OLEDs. Yeah, we have said that Triacinylglycine derivatives show a very wide number of coordination sites. And joined to this low quantum yield, uh, it drives, uh, so we think they can be useful as molecular probes. So uh, we <coughs> perform the SSAs, and with the piperidine derivative, we don't we don't see anything special, a little <coughs> increase in the fluorescence intensity of the system. When uh, we have the orthopyrosol derivative, we see a, a little higher increase than in the previous case, but no selectivity, and it interacts with many cations. <coughs> and when we perform this assays with the <coughs> If an ilamine derivative, we say also an increase, like in the pyrosol case, in the pyrosol case, but mm, and no selectivity. <coughs> but when we have the naphthyl derivative, we see a great selectivity for mercury two ion. It's important to note <coughs> that mercury concentration is three magnitude orders lower than other cations concentration. So, <coughs> we have a radiometric chemosensor for mercury, selective chemosensor, and highly sensitive chemosensor. We also see this image where difference is shown between having or not having mercury on the medium. Due to uh, lumbar lumbar beer law limitations and <coughs> to calculate the detection limit for <coughs> for this method we have to um, the proof uh, the concentrations proof must be at the uh, minus seven molar <coughs> we make an experiment changing uh, mercury concentration and we see that the uh, main change or main increase in the fluorescence intensity occurs between 10 minus 9 molar and 2 uh, or uh, 10 uh, minus 9 molar. <coughs> also notice that toxicity limit marked by uh, Environmental Protection Agency from the USA for mercury in drinking water is two, <coughs> 10, 10 minus 9 molar. 
when we, uh, to determine the detection limit, uh, we perform the linear interval for this valor, this situation, and we have this detection limit is 1.2 nanomolar. This limit, this detection limit is below uh, the detection limit marked by uh, EPA for drinking water, which we have said is 2 nanomolar. When we put uh, mercury 2 with other cations in a solution, <coughs> we also see that there is uh, almost no interference in the solution. So we can say we have a selective probe. <coughs> to calculate the stoichiometry of this complex, we have performed a Jobs plot. <coughs> this Jobs plot has given us a stoichiometry of one mercury and four for the probe. <coughs> We think these molecules can form aggregates in solution. So they have uh, many supramolecular interactions um, <coughs> here. And <coughs> this is a, gives us a critical aggregation concentration of 1.9, 10 minus 5 molar. <coughs> Other uh, aggregation study is the dynamic like scattering. In this case, when we have uh, this compound, uh, 10 minus 4 solution in acetonitrile, <coughs> we see that the most abundant population of the aggregates has a diameter, a hydrodynamic diameter of <coughs> 217 nanometers. But if we repeat the assay with a three magnitude orders concentration lower, we don't see aggregates. <coughs> it fits well with the data obtained by with the Red Nile experiences. <coughs> when we re make the assays to the phenyl derivative, in this occasion we find and uh, this probe is well, we have a selective probe using two. It's important to notice that this probe has an interference with cadmium, which is an ion uh, that, ha that <coughs> makes uh, many problems in other similar probes. And now, uh, <coughs> as we said previously, uh, we have a radiometric chemosensor for thing two, a selective probe for thing two. Uh, this time, uh, the difference is more subtle than in the mercury case. <coughs> Again, we perform a Jobs plot to calculate, to determine the stoichiometry of the complex, and in this occasion, we have a one, one stoichiometry. We try to synthesize uh, the compound, the complex between the probe and the thing two, and <clears throat> we compare the infrared spectra obtained with only the probe and the probe plus thing two. We see uh, these spectra are not equal, <coughs> so something has happened. When we perform and nuclear magnetic resonance uh, for the probe, the probe plus thing. In the proton spectra, we don't see much difference. Perhaps in the amino signals, but it's not much difference. But when we make carbon nuclear magnetic spectra, we say a slight um, <coughs> desplazamiento, <laughs> shift, a slight shift. For the, for the signals from carboxyl group and triacine carbons. And in conclusion, we have synthesized the triacine glycines uh, following a green method in a very short reaction time with microwave reaction. The purification step is very simple 
and we have very good yields. <coughs> we have calculated the free energy of the uh, amino triacin bonds rotation. <coughs> we have characterized the two X-ray st structure, and most importantly, we have the naphthyl derivative is a selective fractiometric chemosensor for mercury-2 and nanomolar levels, and triacinyl glycine with phenyl substituents is a, it's a selective radiometric chemosensor for thin 2 uh, That's all. <coughs> if you have some questions.